In this episode, we give you the final results of what to call a group of chatelaines. A beautiful baby is born, our family is reunited, a disaster happens at the chateau, Isabella presents her latest crochet project, we find decorating bargains at an American discount store, and we get spacey with a real astronaut. To infinity and beyond! This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the easiest way to create a beautiful website and sell everything from products to content, all on your own terms. Welcome back everyone. My location needs no introduction. I thought you would love to see a beautiful sunset in front of the Eiffel Tower. It has been a busy, busy, busy week. Last week we were invited to the extraordinarily wonderful Chateau de la Lande where we were joined by 12, yes 12, other Chatelaines from around France. There were 14 of us in total. Many of you know them from their own YouTube channels and we even made a couple of new friends, Stuart Patrick. It was such a fantastic weekend of sharing jokes, ideas, and best of all, we shared stuff that we couldn't use in our own castles and we went home with several very beautiful things. Our sides hurt from all the fun and laughter. As you may remember, I was also beginning my latest design project for a client here in Paris. She has a splendid but small apartment on the Ile Saint-Louis with a panoramic view of Notre Dame, the Eiffel Tower, and the Pantheon. It's an unusual shape with lots of windows and doors, but I think it will be magnificent when it's finished. And I have lots of sketches and planning to do for this. As I was walking to the site visit, I asked a lot of you, if you have an idea what a group of chatelains ought to be called, let us know. We've come up with a flock, a gaggle, <laughs> all sorts of things. Maybe something that sounds like Chatelaines, and you all had some amazing suggestions. Here are the best ones so far. A chime of chatelaines is in a chime of friends, an upkeep of chatelaines, a bouquet of chatelaines, a chain of chatelaines, a quack of chatelaines, a patina of chatelaines, a kinship of chatelaines, which is very nice, a sparkle of chatelaines, I do love that, a crash of chatelaines, not so sure about that, um, an exuberance of chatelaines, which is very grand indeed. A court of chatelaines, which is a bit too grand, I think, for our rowdy lot. Uh, a giggle of chatelaines, and that would certainly apply to me, personally. Uh, a flamboyance of chatelaines, and I love that. A murder of chatelaines, hmm. Um, maybe a little dark. A cloud of chatelaines, I like that one, it's very dreamy. Uh, a chandelier of chatelaines, I think that one's amazing because it's bright and sparkly, uh, but overwhelmingly, and lots and lots of you uh, made comments and, and voted about this, said that we should be a chatter of chatelaines. A chatter of chatelaines, that sounds about right. And that came up many, many times in the comments, which I read all of them and I try to respond to all of them. Also, several of the magnificent jewelry pieces that I showed you in la last week's episode sold almost immediately and so happily I have added some lovely new pieces this week here they are a gorgeous hand-painted signed Edwardian brooch of an 18th century lady a pair of Wedgwood Prince of Wales cufflinks an Art Nouveau beautifully executed reverse carved celluloid brooch of two flowers and this fantastic mid-century very large and dynamic Limoges locket Puppies, last week Baudelaire and Lancelot were absolutely inseparable Lancelot is Stephanie and Phillips little dog and so Simon mentioned the song puppy love and asked if anybody out there knew who sang it and again the responses were overwhelming turns out a lot of you love Paul Anka who wrote it Donny Osmond who recorded it again in the 70s and big surprise to me and maybe to others of you out there Dolly Parton whose first song that she ever wrote was also called puppy love so I had to immediately go look it up and I didn't know about it and it's been stuck in my head all weekend but now I have a very big couple of days because I'm on my way to America. Yes, the baby has been born. And no, it is not Isabella and Jax. Yes, they do have a baby. It is baby Baudelaire, our puppy, but no real babies on the horizon for them. However, my brother Justin and my sister-in-law Chelsea have just had my baby nephew and we are all absolutely ecstatic. He's teeny tiny. And then on to see the family in Florida. Many of you know them from the last few years. We have some very big adventures planned and I cannot wait to share them with you. 
Today and tomorrow, I have some mood boards. I have to visit some suppliers, look at pre-ordering some of the big items for this Paris apartment. The items have bigger lead times, like custom sofas and beds before my trip. But first, we're going to enjoy the last of this magnificent, magnificent sunset. Okay, let's get back to decorating and design work here in Paris. back in another airport on my way to the States. So now um, I'm on my way to Florida to meet my new nephew, the new family member, and also of course to see the whole rest of the family. Um, and I've made it to Miami. A little worse for the wear, and Ashley's on her way to collect me. This is very exciting. She's here. It doesn't want to be filmed. <laughs> and there she is, Miami. Oh, I hope I found the right turn. You can do it, Ashley. I have faith in you. I don't know. I don't have as much faith in me as you do. <laughs> I have endless faith in you. I love Miami. Don't talk about anything interesting for a few minutes. You got it. I know it'll be hard. <laughs> Cheeky! <laughs> how, about, how about I film you while you're on this big ah, scary road driving stop. through Miami? This is really amazing because all of our family are finally getting together. So I've got all my siblings, my brand new baby nephew, and we've even got Jack here in the park. <laughs> Like Gang's here. all here. Yeah, so Jonathan, nice. hey. can you meet your nephew? Yeah. Who's ready for a baby? <laughs> <laughs> You've got a puppy, that's enough for now. Once he's fed and changed, he's usually pretty chill. Same fella. Yeah, not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Can't argue there. A silly one, I want everyone to do the dumbest pose you can possibly imagine. Oh, Bella, you're doing amazing already. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one, smile! <laughs> oh, lovely. Oh, awesome. One of the greatest passion projects to come out of the Chateau Love YouTube channel was the Chateau Love website, where we sell unique Chateau-related art, photographs, bags, gifts, and best of all, antique and vintage jewelry. But what you might not know is that Simon and I created the website, the whole thing, ourselves. Squarespace has incredible, easy to use templates, the ability to have an online store and something called a fluid engine, which enables you to design and develop every aspect, drag and drop technology. If you have creativity and ideas and designs you'd like to share with the world, check out 
squarespace.com. And when you're ready to launch, use this 10% off code for the first purchase of a domain or website. Now back to the adventures. Hey everyone, how are you doing? Vivian's in America and I just thought I'd send you this quick report on how much rain we've had. It's been insane here in uh, our little part of the world around Marsan. I'm going to show you the river behind me. This is the river and as you can see it's burst its banks. We've had so much rain it's completely burst the banks behind us. It's it's never been this bad and it's water for miles. Look. So I've come off the main road just a little bit uh, further down from where the river is. The river is is like right over there. See me pointing? It's way over there. That's where the river is. And behind me here, look, these are fields. And behind over there, there's a house and that's all surrounded by water. And it's, it's still raining now. In our poor little garden, oh no, a week ago, I came down to the house and uh, there was a tree, one of our trees here in the park, about that size there. See how tall that is that had cracked against the wall behind me. You can see it just there. That's where it hit the tile and just leant against the wall because the ground, I'm talking about the rain, the ground is so soggy down there that the roots couldn't hold into the ground. I guess we had a strong wind and it pushed it against the wall. And anyway, now I had the guys in yesterday. They had to come and clean the tree up. Tree up. And uh, well, the good news is I've got wood for the next, or at least I would say a couple of years there. But um, the sad thing is that our tree has gone and um, we're gonna have to plant some more, I think, just to kind of replace. Uh, so that's just part of, um, you know, what you have to deal with when you have these um, big trees all around the house. And this is our park with our fire pit in the background. And this used to have a few more trees here, but of course they had to come down because a lot of them are dead. So with the wind and everything else, we can't leave them up because if they go down, they'll smash the wall and that would be a much bigger bill to repair. So you have to do the preventative work and keep the trees in good shape. But if they die on you, there's not much you can do. So it's our water tower behind me in the back. You can see that, We've, that was built when the house was built. That's an old water tower. Anyway, just a little bit of an update on how things are here at the, at the chateau. Okay, I'm gonna let you in on a dirty little secret. When we come to America, I'm still thinking of decorating, design, and the chateau. So what does that mean? A trip to home goods. Yes, you too can find stuff for your chateau at the discount store. I really love it when they have great cushions. So fingers crossed we find something and get it home. But look at that, it's a fleur-de-lis rolling oversized cart wouldn't that be great in a chateau garden and right ahead of me gorgeous blue and white lamps i would have to rewire these and figure out how to get them home but also those are really pretty Any more? ralph lauren lamp and brooks brothers lamps we're in the preppy section <laughs> i think i'm a little preppy because I, I quite like these but i had no idea that brooks brothers made lamps 
And this I just love. I really want the mix of um, 60s and that new though. I, I really do like the little pink fan. I think it's adorable. And then there's a monkey with a toothache. Hmm. Some things here are definitely better than others. And here we have cushions. These are outdoor cushions. Definitely too big to fit in my luggage, which is very, very sad. Oh my goodness, this fabric is so much fun. I need a giant, giant suitcase. And this is where I really wish I had one of these in France because there are gorgeous rugs here. Look at the size of that one. It's massive and it's beautifully sculpted, but there is no way I can get it home. And it's only 399. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't it pretty? Yes. They've got actually some really nice things here. You're wasting my time by showing me everything that's not nice in here. Stop it. I don't need a flying pig. Because then you can say one pig's flying. You can point to no, this. Yeah, no thanks. I feel like Not for the chateau, no thank you. We're in the fake plant section. Get out of it. Oh, no, Quickly. Oh my gosh. You won't believe it, but look, I know I know everybody's into porcelain peacocks, but hear me out. I feel like Turtles is the next YouTube. Except what you don't realize is that when we went with Stephanie and Philip into La Chatte to the old man who's the who's the last remaining finals porcelain mm -hmm. painter, he actually had a turtle covered in tiles <laughs> that Stephanie bought. I, and this is insane. Obviously, hers is much nicer she than gave this. She matching set. No, but isn't that crazy? I didn't think in my life I'd ever see another turtle covered in blue and white porcelain, but you managed to find it here in America in Home Goods. There is something for everyone. One thing I almost always take home when I come to the States is sheets. I love really high thread count sheets. And sometimes we can get lucky and get them at a good price. And look at all this. So if we're really lucky, I'll find some beautifully embroidered things. I love the way that they've separated everything by color. Oh, look at that. I actually quite like that. Okay, that, that is pretty cute. It doesn't really go with our chateau, but it's pretty cute. It's a mushroom teapot. Oh, with little matching mushroom mugs. So cute. The other thing I love here is all the cooking stuff. And what I really wish I could get home is one of these giant bowls. Look at that. To give you an idea, look how big my hand is. This thing is massive, 24 quarts. But it will not fit in my suitcase. Or will it? You may be wondering where we are. What are two Chatelains doing standing in front of a bunch of rockets? <laughs> of course, as we're in Florida, we had to come to the Kennedy Space Center. So this is a very special family visit. You might be wondering what does space? have to do with Chateau and Chateau Love and what are Chatelains doing here? Well, we do share a common dream and that is to explore our boundaries. We're adventurers. And of course, Isabella is a scientist as is her boyfriend, Jack, who's an astrophysicist. Those are the two happiest little nerds in the world. <laughs> you ready to go get spacey? Yeah. Yes.
up to the floor and fly over to this wall. Touch it with one finger, fly that direction. You have to dodge some of the other people coming your way, right? So it'd be wild, be wild. If we could go find a piano somewhere, I could bring the piano in and just go, hey, here's the piano, just throw a piano to you. <laughs> or tonight, or after you do the trip, you go home and into your apartment or hotel or, uh, excuse me, or apartment or house. And if you could turn gravity off, you could fly into the kitchen. Yeah, this is great. The refrigerator would be floating there. You'd unplug it, take the refrigerator, push off, and look for someone else in the house to play catch with. With a refrigerator. I mean, it's magical. The other thing that's happening here is I'm getting taller. We grow about one to two inches in space because there's no gravity compressing our spine. So I was really tall in space. Doesn't hurt. Uh, when you come back to Earth, it goes to your old height. Uh, one of the things I should divulge to you when thinking about flying in space is that everything inside my body is floating too. <laughs> so the organs are kind of bumping around, they're not in their old place. The contents of your stomach is kind of just floating around, bouncing off. Um, that fluid in your ear canals, which gives you your sense of balance, it's also kind of floating around. My hair is not very interesting, right? So I chose a picture of Karen this time. Karen Nyberg. Um, yeah, so we use waterless shampoo and body bath. You just squirt it on your skin or into your hair, rub it in, take a towel, and it works. It works just fine. It doesn't feel the same as being uh, under a shower on Earth, right? Because that kind of takes your tension away. You don't really have that, you know. Sleeping in space is cool. We have built on our sleeping bags on the wall and the ceiling. Uh, John and I are here at the lower deck of the space shuttle. Um, when you're in your sleeping bag, you should put your hands inside eventually. Because if you don't, you fall asleep, your arms will be kind of waving all around. At night, I can't sleep like that. And you might see your hand and go, whose hand is that? <laughs> you know, so it's really bizarre. You put it in the sleeping bag. And you also wear a seatbelt uh, seat or brush your forehead. Otherwise, your head will kind of bob around. We have to wear it because there's no air, of course, for the half. You do see I have a cable coming off my hip, uh, keeping me attached to this fish shuttle. Um, if you know anybody that thinks the Earth is uh, flat, it's not. Um, you can see a curvature to the Earth there. See? It's a circle. Uh, I'll close with some thoughts about this gem. It's an island. It's an island. We live on an island. We have to remember that. So I hope you also remember that word, island. Um, it's in this vast black ocean, and seeing Earth from space does change the way astronauts think about life. It's called the overview effect, overview effect, if you want to look up on the internet. And it has kind of two pieces. One is that since it looks like an island, we should take care of it, right? So we have this increased sense of responsibility of being good to Earth. Um, I think we need to all reestablish our relationship with Earth. It's a great place to live. We don't need to go to Mars. Let's just take care of the Earth. And the other thought is, uh, my gosh, all of humanity is there, and there's no borders. You don't see any borders, that's just in maps and, and books, right? So you don't see the countries of, of uh, South America divided by the lines or the states of the US. So for that reason, I think astronauts also come back with this kind of uh, feeling about peace and uh, tolerance, and uh, that we're really one global community. Pools, when you were first time on your bus at the space walk, and what was going through your head? Yeah, so for um, the space launch, we practice extensively about a year ahead of time. So we spend about 10 hours in the pool for every hour in the space. It's entirely scripted out. It's like a ballet. I know exactly where I'm going every moment. I know where my partner is. We know exactly what we're going to do on the Bell Space Telescope. Um, they do give us, though, five minutes when we first go out the door on our first flight. They leave you alone. They just say, just move around. Just come from the air station. Any more questions? Hi, so you said that all um, research you do in space benefits people on Earth. How do you think space tourism will benefit the average person on Earth? Do you think it might help with medicine development or learning about the human body, or do you just think it will be something fun for people to try out in 50 years or so? Really interesting question. I think most of the deep science is going to be left to um, professional scientists that are going to live on the space station or the moon or Mars for a while. Will know that they may have invented the experiment that's trying to develop an anti cancer drug, for example. But you know, tourism is good for the space program because it creates this feeling that it's, you know, it's popular, um, it's accessible, especially someday. Um, so I think it can't be, it's good, it's good for the whole country.
Kimberly. Thank you so much for joining us. We will see you next week for more Chateau love, more Paris love, more decorating love, more friend love, more family love. Just love love all around. Au revoir. A bientôt. A très bientôt. This is la vie rose. When you kiss me, heaven sighs. And though I close my eyes, I see la vie rose. When you press me to your heart, I'm in a world apart. A world where roses bloom. And life will always